Good evening, everyone. My name is Stephanie Bishke, and I am the Advancement Events Specialist for the Rutgers University Alumni Association. I thank you all for being with us today. Today, I'm pleased to welcome you to Fall Floral Arrangements with Redwood Florist, featuring owner and Rutgers alumna Mary Trinan. Mary graduated from Douglas College with a degree in communications in 1997. During her time on the banks, Mary worked at Redwood Florist conveniently located in the train station in downtown New Brunswick and not too far from Douglas campus. She has worked in the floral industry for over 20 years and as of this past March has owned Redwood Florist for 13 years. Congratulations, Mary. If you have any questions for our presenter, please submit them in the Q&A box at the bottom right of your screen. We will do our best to accommodate as many questions as possible. For your convenience, this presentation is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Rutgers Alumni YouTube channel. Following this presentation, you will receive an email with a link to the channel. It is now my pleasure to turn it over to Mary. Yeah. Hi, everybody. How are you? Uh, thank you for joining us tonight for this floral design course. Uh, it is a little bit different not being able to see any of you uh, to do this virtual. It's new for me, so bear with me, but hopefully some techniques tonight that you'll be able to then use you know, in the future uh, when you buy flowers. And um, also, you know, if you're working along with us tonight, you'll be able to get some tips and, uh, and hopefully put together a nice arrangement to keep at home with you tonight. So we're going to be doing a dozen uh, roses in a vase, which is, you know, kind of a typical arrangement, but um, there is a lot more to it than you might realize sometimes when you get a dozen uh, of roses delivered to you, uh, as opposed to just buying, you know, a bunch at the store and kind of dropping it in a vase. We take a bit more time with the greens. Uh, we use a little bit more uh, filler. So those are the, all the techniques that I want to show you tonight so that you can have an idea of how to do this at home next time you do get flowers uh, delivered to you as well, or you pick them up at the store, you can kind of make them look, uh, you know, a little bit more special. So first thing I have here is my vase, which this vase happens to be eight inches tall, and it has about a four inch opening. So this is a good size to work with for a dozen roses. Um, if you're working with something at home and it's much larger, you might want to try to get grab something that's a little bit smaller opening. Um, but, you know, ideally, this is a good size for a dozen roses arranged or for like a small arrangement if you were to get, you know, a mix of clay at home. So I'm going to be working with lemon leaf greens, which, is, which are these here, um, some baker fern, our roses, and I have some solidago, which is a very pretty fall filler. So the first thing we're gonna do is green our vase. Now I'm using a pair of clippers. These are like pruning shears. Um, if you have something like these at home and you're comfortable using them, then that works great. Or if you, know, you have a sharp pair of scissors, it is important to cut the bottom of the stems with something sharp so that you're not closing up the stem, but you're actually kind of you know, letting it be open so it can take up the water. Um, and last longer that way. So you want to make sure, you know, you have a tool that you're comfortable with. Um, and we're going to spend a little bit of time on greening. So what people don't realize is the greens are really the base of, you know, every arrangement. If you don't have enough greens in your vase, then when you go to put the flowers in, they'll all sort of just flop over. Um, so we really, you know, stress that you need more greens than you might think. And, um, you know, you can do a variety of foliage, which is nice. We're, you know, working with, like I said, the lemon leaf and the baker fern, but there are different types of greens out there. Sometimes if you go to a flower shop and you buy something, you know, sometimes the bouquet might not even come with any greens. So this is something that you're gonna learn too, that if you go, you know, in the future, you can request extra greens with your flowers or, um, you know, pick up something extra so you know that it'll help your arrangement to look a little bit better in the end. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start cutting my lemon leaf. So basically, anytime you're adding anything into your vase, you're going to want to measure it against the vase so that when it drops in, you know, like if we just put it in like this, obviously it's <laughs> way too tall. So we want to make sure that we're kind of holding it up against the vase where we want it to fall. And then you can kind of gauge, you know, how much you need to cut off. 
hopefully that makes sense. So it's, you know, the idea is that you want when you put your grains in for it to fall like around the edge of the vase there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep putting in you know, all this lemon leaf. I wish I could see what you guys were doing at home, <laughs> but I, I can't see you. So hopefully uh, you're seeing what I'm doing and you can kind of do this on your own with your greens that you have in front of you. Okay, so you're just gonna keep putting stems in. You can kind of crisscross them in the vase. The goal is gonna be that at the end, you wanna have your vase completely full where there's almost no empty space. You can always cut off if you see, you know, something that doesn't look good, something's brown. Um, that is something to note that, you know, sometimes you're gonna have to take leaves off the bottom so that you're not ending up with a lot of foliage in the water. Uh, the goal normally is to really try not to have much extra foliage um, in your water because that can just lead to bacteria developing in the water, which will then, you know, lead to the flowers um, having a lesser vase light. So you'll see it's going to take quite a bit of greens. And if for some reason, you know, if you did buy greens and you don't have enough, try to cut them maybe a little bit shorter. Or like I said, you know, if you have a minute, you can grab a slightly smaller phase so that in the end, you're really able to fill it pretty well with the greens that you have. So a lot of times, even for holiday preparation, we'll green the vases ahead of time. So we'll, you know, no, oh, we're going to make, uh, you know, say 20, 20 dozen roses arranged uh, for Valentine's Day. So we'll, we'll start greening the vases even a couple days prior because the greening, as you can see, can take, can take time. And it's really what almost takes the most time, and it's the base of your arrangement, so it's very important. So we will sometimes do this kind of prep work ahead of time um, for events and holidays, anything like that. I'm getting to the point where my vase is looking pretty good. Uh, sometimes, you know, you have to put your clippers down, uh, make sure you can really tuck in everything in there. So you want it to the point where it's almost like you can't even get in another, another step. I don't know if you can kind of see from the top, it's all, there's not really a hole in the middle anymore. So that's, that is the goal. Um, so I would say this is a good base of lemon leaf to work with. What we will do later on, and as we go and add our roses, we can always add more greens. <laughs> so believe it or not, we, we may add more. Um, next, I have the Baker fir. This is kind of a more standard foliage. And a lot of times, if you do buy roses in the store, they might come with maybe two stems of Baker fir, and that might be it. Um, and so that's why I said it's always important if you start to learn, you can ask for them to give you more greens so that you can have more to work with. So the Baker firm we like to use with a dozen roses because it gives a little bit of a different texture and it also allows a little bit more height to the arrangement. So I'm just gonna cut, you know, just to give it a fresh cut at the bottom. We tend to use three stems of Baker firm um, in our arrangements for roses. It just gives it a nice shape. And like I said, it just kind of, you know, it's always nice to have different textures um, I'll show you later, we have some eucalyptus that we can add at the end. And, you know, you'd be surprised how many different things you can kind of add to give a little bit of, you know, visual interest and, and different, um, different textures to your arrangement. So this is three, so I can kind of put them, you know, almost in a triangle. Again, if you can see that. And now we're at the point where we are ready to start adding our flowers. So I have here uh, a dozen roses. And I actually like to usually take my roses that I'm working with and put them, you know, right on the counter next to me so that you can kind of see the heights that you're working with. I'm working with yellow and red. You can do um, mixed colors, obviously, on roses or sometimes even, you know, all one dozen of a straight color always looks really nice. So what you want to do is pick a rose that's going to be nice and kind of, I guess, straight because there are, there are roses that you'll find are, you know, a little bit curvy at the top or 
going one way or the other. So I usually do try to find that sort of perfect rose for the center of my bees. Um, and general rule of thumb when you're designing is that you want your tallest flower to not be any taller than about, like about one more height size of the vase, right? So my vase is eight, eight inches, probably the rose, you know, shouldn't be more than about double that, right? Um, if it was, you know, all the way up here, it would just kind of look unproportionate to the vase. Uh, so we're trying to, you know, so if you're working with a shorter vase, like sometimes we use things like cubes. Um, you know, there's definitely lots of different vases. So we, we do a dozen roses in a cube all the time. With something like this, the height would be, you know, probably right about here. Uh, so based on your container, you always want to keep that in mind when you're deciding, you know, how tall you want your tallest flowers to be so that it just looks proportionate and also so that they're getting like the amount, the right amount of water that they need as well. So we're going to go ahead and place our first rows in the middle. This one, you know, the height on this one is just about right. I'm just going to go ahead and cut about an inch or so off of that. A nice cut on an angle. You've probably heard that before. It is good to give a fresh cut uh, on an angle. It just opens up, like I said, the bottom of the stem so that, you know, they'll take up the water. Okay, so we're going to tuck that right into the middle. And this is where you'll see if I put this rose here and it stays, um, then that's good. It means we have enough greens. If it, you know, if I did put it in and it kind of flopped right over, you're going to know right from the get-go that you need to go back and maybe add some more greens. So if you're having that problem right now by any chance, take a minute and add some more greens to your base because your goal is to really have it so that when you put the flowers in, they stay where you put them. Okay, so this one actually I think looks a little bit too tall for me. I'm going to shimmy it out and just cut maybe about one more inch off. And that's important to note too. A lot of times you know, you can move things around. So <laughs> you don't have to, you know, go with your first placement. So what I typically do for a dozen roses arranged is a very simple um, design, I guess. We do one in the middle. We tend to do four roses around that, around that center rose. And then the rest of our roses will we'll bring out here along the outer part of the vase. So that's how you get that really nice shape of a dozen roses arranged and it's a little bit more tiered. Um, versus if you, again, buy them at the store and they're just like, you know, they're just kind of like this and you might just take them and drop them in a vase, you're going to end up, you know, with all the tops at the top. So this gives you a nice visual where you can see all the roses and you can really, you know, get to appreciate them opening. And are you able to check and see if everybody's following along or if anybody has any questions right now? Or are we doing okay? We're doing okay. Yeah, we're doing good. Okay, okay good. So my next rose, I'm going to take, and I'm going to measure the top towards, you know, where the first one I put. I want this one to drop down a little bit from it. So I'm going to go ahead and just hold it up against there so that I can see where I want it to fall. And once it's about, you know, almost like a head size below the, the middle rose, that's what we're going to use. And you're going to put it right into your base. So you'll see again, you know, kind of dropping down, right? So I'm going to go ahead and add the other three roses. Our roses have most of their thorns taken off uh, when they come in. We actually have a rose stripper that we run them through. But if you do receive roses and they have a lot of foliage or thorns at the bottom, you do want to take the time to try to clean that off. So again, whether or not some you can just take off by hand, um, but others you might need to use the clippers or a knife even um, to get them off so that, again, you don't want to have that falling below your waterline, ideally. So you can play around with your color placement, see, you know, what you like, what looks good. Hello. We probably get a lot of requests for, I guess the most requests are probably for uh, red roses. Um, we try to tell people, oh, you know, you can do something a little different and go with other colors. You know, this time of year, um, I think the yellow and the orange roses are really pretty. Uh, you know, there's, there's so many different colors that you don't even realize in roses. So it's nice to kind of, you know, get different colors and different varieties to, to play around with. They all open a little bit differently, last longer than others. Um, so this now we have our four roses you can kind of see from the top and 
I'm going to go ahead and so we have left seven, right? Yep, seven more roses. So basically the, the rest of the roses, I'm going to place them and my goal is to have them kind of looking at you like this, right? So you want to fill in the bottom of the vase. Um, so again, it's kind of like a tear down. So I'm going to go ahead and what you can do, I guess we kind of get in the habit of, you know, we're comfortable sort of cutting you and just placing them. You can, you know, turn your vase around, kind of see where you might have an empty spot. So that's, you know, something that you want to do too, is always kind of move your vase around so you can see where you might be missing something. Okay, so again, I don't know if you can really understand this part of it. It's hard to show on camera, but when you're going to see where, how you want to measure your rose, I'm going to say, okay, I want this rose to fall here. Can you see this? Okay, so you can see that the stem is here. I'm going to need to cut it, you know, right at about here so that it will fall there in the base. Okay, go ahead and do that. In the beginning, it might be easier to cut a little bit more off than you might think. But at the same time, you want to be careful not to cut them too short because you always want to make sure all the stems are in water. So when I'm putting most of my stems in, they're actually hitting towards the bottom of the vase. Um, if you were to cut it super short, you know, like say to here, and still place it in the right spot, the vase, the water, I mean, I'm sorry, the stem is only going to be in maybe, you know, a few inches of water. And then what typically tends to happen is people forget about <laughs> the flowers um, you know, over a couple of days, the water goes down and now those stems aren't in water anymore. And then you'll see those flowers die off quick, you know, more quickly because they're not getting water. So you do want to keep the stems as long as you can um, while getting them still at that right angle so that when you place them in your vase, they're sitting at a nice, a nice angle so that you can see them and enjoy them all opening. So, and I always find that when I'm moving along, you know, sometimes you put one rose in and it moves something else around. <laughs> so you have to maybe go back and adjust. Hopefully you guys are working along with me. And this technique, you know, it can work for other flowers. Um, obviously, you know, we're working with just all one type of flower here. So it makes it a little bit easier. If we were doing, you know, a mixed vase, then we might, you know, we would do things a little bit differently as far as where we might be placing the flowers. So if we had, you know, a really big hydrangea or a lily, you know, we might place those at the base of the vase versus something that's tall, like a snapdragon um, that we might put in the middle of the vase. So this, you know, one does, and you can kind of always design it this same way every single time, and it'll look the same um, with mixed flowers you can play around with it a little bit differently and you know maybe that's something that we'll do again in the future and also like i said different size vases work too for a dozen roses arranged and you can do you know a more compact style is something that um people sell you know people order a lot now a days um you know in a cylinder vase or a cube like this one's very tall you know so you will be cutting Sometimes you'll be cutting quite a bit off the stem, so don't be concerned if you find that you're cutting, you know, four or five inches sometimes off of a flower. Um, it's really better to do that so that when you do get it in your vase, like I said, it's getting uh, a nice, a good water source. So hopefully everyone can kind of see where I'm at now. We've got, oh, well, I have two more roses left, and you can see I have an obvious, like, empty spot back here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that they right there. I'm constantly always kind of judging it and moving things around a little bit. Uh, Stephanie said I've been um, Mayor, in the flower actually... business for quite a long time. I went to, went to Rutgers, started working at this flower shop when I was at school and um, continued working, you know, for that flower shop after I graduated. But um, eventually I purchased this location. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, I see customer here, customers who come in sometimes who, you know, remember me from back, way back when. <laughs> Been in town for a long time. And uh, it's great that Rutgers alumni was able to do this, to do this event. We work with them a lot during the year, usually on events and 
things like that. And it's always so much fun. And so now we're doing things a little differently with virtual, right? But um, we're making it work. So, okay. So this is all of our roses. And hopefully, you know, it looks pretty good, the shape. If at this point you decided maybe you want to add a couple more greens, that's something that we could do. Like if you felt that there was a little bit of an empty space on the side, that's when you would take a little bit more of your lemon leaf. You have some more. And you can kind of finish it off in a sense, like a, almost like a little collar around the base. So sometimes we'll do that because as you're designing with the roses, um, you know, sometimes the greens get a little bit more pushed in and you might not have that nice shape at the bottom of the green. So, so don't be afraid to add a couple more greens into there. Okay, so this is the dozen roses. Um, so, you know, you can see this yellow rose is really pretty. It's a lot more open, so it's filling up a lot of space. Um, sometimes you might get roses that are, you know, tighter and, but they'll continue to open, you know, over a few days, uh, when you have them in, in water. So next what we're going to, we're going to add uh, filler. So we always call it, I think sometimes I realize that, you know, people probably don't know what, <laughs> what we mean by filler. Um, but there's certain types of flowers that in the floral industry, they're just listed as filler flowers. So basically they fill in, um, amongst, you know, the, the main flowers. So today I have something called Solidago. This is actually a tinted Solidago. So it's normally yellow. They've tinted it red so that it actually takes on a little bit more of like a reddish hue for the fall. Um, I'll just show you really quickly, but we do have other you know, options to use. Would be your standard uh, baby's breath, which people either kind of like love it or hate it. Um, so a very traditional filler with roses is gonna be baby's breath and a lot of times you know, really brightens it up and, and looks, you know, really nice and pretty. Um, something else is Lumplora. Grab the stem here. This is one of my favorite fillers. It's, especially this time of year, it has like a little bit of a yellowish tinge to it, kind of wildflower looking. I, you know, I think it looks really nice with roses as well. So that's something again, that you add it in here. So depending on really your style, uh, you can always try to ask a flower shop to give you something other than baby's breath. If maybe that is what they're typically, you know, selling with their roses. Um, you can see if they have, you know, just a, something different. You can say, oh, so maybe something seasonal uh, that has a little more color to it. Or if you start to learn, you know, the names of your flowers and that always helps. And you can ask for uh, wax flowers, a very pretty one. I don't think we have that here. Oh, we do. I'll show you a little bit. This is wax flower. Can you see it there? It's very pretty. It has a nice fragrance to it as well. So that's also probably one of the ones that we use. I would say for Valentine's Day, um, it's really readily available. So we use it a lot for Valentine's Day as our filler. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add the tinted solidago for now into this. Right now, I have I have three stems. You might need, you know, I would say usually of a filler flower. Um, if it's something like this blue florum, you'll see that there's lateral, so you can kind of cut this one off and cut this one off and, you know, use the whole stem and get a lot more out of maybe one large stem. So it does depend on really just how full the stems are um, as to how much you might need. So again, I'm going to, you know, clean any excess foliage that might fall below the waterline. And then my goal is really just to kind of you know, tuck it in where there might be a little bit more of a space between the roses. And again, height wise, what you want to do is have it so that they're not too tall. They're not overpowering the roses, but they're accenting them and are kind of tucked in, you know, amongst them. So I'll cut this one down and you'll probably get a better idea. So I'm going to be cutting quite a bit off of this stem. Some, you know, some things come in with a lot longer stems. So normally when you go into the vase, you're going to be, you know, usually going in at an angle. So it's going to make a difference where, you know, it's going to fall nice like that. Whereas if you try to say, take this one, and again, we're me measuring it, you know, kind of up against my base. If you have a counter, you 
can always use your counter as uh, somewhere where you, you know, hold the stem up against to see where you want to cut. And then you'll see, okay, you know, that's where I'm going to cut it. So you have the right height. But, you know, so it can make a difference if you went and kind of just maybe tucked it in like a little too straight. It doesn't look horrible, but <laughs> for us, it's not really sitting at, you know, the right angle. Um, so I would say, you know, you want to have the stem probably a little bit more at an angle so that the, the bottom of the stem, oh, I can't even get it in there because I put so many greens. <laughs> um, the bottom of the stem is going to be normally hitting the opposite side of the veins that you, you know, that you're putting it in at. Okay, so we've got those two in place. Well, you can get an idea of how that's, you know, starting to fill up. Obviously, over here now, I have kind of a big empty spot. So I'll use my last stem right there. So it's, I think the most important thing is taking a little bit of time. A lot of times, you know, people to get flowers at home and they just kind of take it and drop it in the vase. But if you really want it to look a little bit more designed, um, then you want to, you know, actually really take everything out of that bouquet, put it on your counter, open it up, see what you have to work with, you know, find the right vase because that's that's really key. A lot of times people use a vase that's too big. Um, and it's just, you know, everything's going to kind of flop in it. Or maybe they, you know, have a vase that's too sh that's shorter, but they leave all the flowers really tall. So, you know, I all tend to go in, you know, went into my hairstylist once and I was said, oh, I just, <laughs> I need to redo that. I need me to redo that vase because, you know, the flowers were just too tall. So I was able to really take everything and cut it down and they just, you know, were amazed at how much different it looked. So it does really make a difference uh, if you're able to, you know, take some time and play around with it at home. I think you'll find that you can really get, you know, that that look that you get when a florist delivers to you, obviously. Um, but you can still do that at home, too. So so now we're at the point where we have all of our greens, our filler, our roses. Uh, one other accent I was going to show you is uh, eucalyptus. So for this time of year, especially, uh, this particular type of eucalyptus is called silver dollar eucalyptus. Um, there's actually quite a few varieties of eucalyptus. So this is something that's nice. It's going to offer a little bit of fragrance also. And it's something that you can add towards the base of your vase to just give a little bit of a different look where you're going to actually see it almost hanging, hanging down. So there comes in a, um, something called seeded eucalyptus which has like a little bit of a berry look to it. So it's, eucalyptus is kind of fun and it lasts a long time. Um, so again, you know, that's something that you want to ask for something. That's one of the kind of fillers that you could ask for, especially this time of year. So the eucalyptus, same thing, you're going to take off any foliage that you have. And my goal with this is going to have it to be a little bit more the base of the base. So I'm going to tuck it in almost on the outside of my greens kind of really tuck it down so that it just gives, you can see this sort of, you know, very pretty, hangs down. It's a very soft, very soft look. And I'll add another piece over here to the other side. Hopefully you guys are either still working on your arrangements or you're keeping up. Um, and if anything, learning a little bit so that the next time you get flowers, you're able to design them really nice. There we go. So that's a couple pieces of the eucalyptus. Um, you know, we could honestly keep adding more, this, uh, but you know, sometimes it gets to a point where you have enough in there. There is a uh, hypericum berries, which again are very nice for the fall. And this would be something that you could do as your primary filler, or you could just, you know, tuck a couple stems in to just give a little different, little different uh, texture. Add one more stem. People ask us a lot, I guess, um, how long the roses last, or they'll say, "Oh, I don't want to get roses." because they die right away. So we hear that all the time. 
Um, actually, you know, we've always found from our customers that they say our roses last a really long time, usually, you know, a week, sometimes longer. Um, should last about seven to 10 days when you buy them. Uh, it does depend on how fresh they are when you're buying them. So if they've been sitting somewhere a long time, you can kind of tell if you, you know, feel a rose, the head of the rose, you want it to still feel strong, like it still has, you know, a lot of petals to open. Um, so that's something to look for. Sometimes people think that you want to get, you know, a super, super tight rose, almost like, like a Hershey Kiss, we say, oh, but the rose looks like a Hershey Kiss, that's not good because it might be too tight. It actually might never open. So you kind of want to look for roses that are, you know, just starting to open. Like this one is, you know, perfect. Um, it's just starting to open, so you know it's going to continue to open nicely for you at home, uh, and um, and then you'll get to, you know, really enjoy it. So after you have your arrangement all done, what you want to do is you really do keep up on the water. Uh, you'd be surprised, but flowers soak up a lot of water really quickly. So I would say every two to three days, if you're able to just dump out the water, you don't have to take out your whole arrangement. You can kind of just tip it and dump the water and add fresh water. Um, if you're so inclined, you should really try to give everything a fresh cut. So that would actually be, you know, if you went like this and took the whole thing out, you know, hold it really tight and just clip all your stems, you're gonna see that as a few days go by, they're gonna look a little bit darker at the bottom and by giving them that nice fresh cut again, you're reopening the stem so that they continue to take up fresh water and again, will last longer. So you can do that and still drop it right back in your vase without losing your full design. So I think that that's about it. Um, maybe you can let me know if you have any questions at this point as to what we've done. Um, like I said, Something, you know, the, the main points that I'd like to just reiterate, I guess, are the vase that you choose to make sure you choose the right size vase for the flowers that you're working with and, and greenery, you know, make sure you have a lot of greenery enough to work with so that you can really get a base where you don't have any holes. And that way, when you start to put your flowers in, uh, they'll really, they'll stay where you put them. Okay, so Stephanie, any questions yet or? Yes. Review? Yep, we have we have quite a few questions from the audience. Um, okay, first, yes. that arrangement looks beautiful. Great job. I'm sure everybody at home, they all look Thank good too. Thank you. Did you get to do one with us, Stephanie, or no? I was monitoring the Q&A, but since this is being okay. recorded, I can go back and do it at another time. Don't worry, I will. Sounds good. Um, so the first question we have, you were talking about cutting the greens on an angle, and why is that different from a straight cut? Um, it's just that it opens up more of the stem. So I would say, you know, with something like the lemon leaf, it's not as important. You know, we kind of probably just cut that pretty, pretty straight. But with a rose, if you cut it straight, can you see this? Okay. So if you cut it straight, you know, you're just going to have an, this nice flat cut. That's okay. It's going to mm -hmm. also still, you know, let um, fresh water up the stem. But if you cut it at that angle, you end up with a more, like more of, um, what's the word, a surface? Yeah. Um, and it, it just tends to help to take up water more quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. And again, that will just last, you know, that will lead to the flowers lasting longer for you. So that's that's why we do that. Sometimes they say to cut stems underwater. I don't think that's something that you really have to do. That's just one of those kind of things that you hear to do. <laughs> but the idea really is that when you do cut the stem, Ideally, you want to put it in water shortly thereafter. So you don't want to, you know, cut all your flowers and then put them on the counter and come back to them later. You want to kind of cut them as you're putting them into the vase so that they're getting right into the water and continuing to take up the water into their stem. Great. Another question. What are some terminology or specific directions that um, we as flower orders should use when ordering a custom arrangement other than flower color and arrangement size, what would be helpful for florists here when we're ordering? Sure, that's a good question. Um, when somebody has a little bit of, you know, flower knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so usually I will say to someone, oh, if you're going to call, you know, another flower shop, make sure you tell them that you want specialty flowers um, versus maybe standard flowers. And that's also your 
your preference, but so what we mean by that is a standard flower is going to be anything like mums, carnations, baby's breath. They're a little bit more of your standard flowers that last a long time, actually. Um, but, you know, the more specialty flowers are going to be things like Gerbera daisies and hydrangea, um, snapdragons, you know, a little bit more different, unusual flowers, I guess. So that's the terminology that we try to recommend saying, you know, can I have more specialty flowers? Um, you could always say, you know, you prefer something that's a little bit more garden style. Um, you know, definitely it's always good to let, I would say, a shop know if there's certain things that you really don't like. So, you know, we always pay attention to, oh, you know, please don't put, you know, any baby's breath. I hate baby's breath. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, we won't use that, of course, um, versus, you know, something that you say, oh, I, you know, really love sunflowers. I would say if you're able to allow, if you're ordering an arrangement to be sent to someone, it's always great to let the let the flower shop do what they do best, um, and you know maybe do like a designer's choice kind of an arrangement, but give them a couple options, you know, of what you really do like, you know. So can you please include some sunflowers and whatever else looks great, you know, with sunflowers right now, or can you, you know, make the arrangement, you know, mostly purple, um, but again, you know, maybe no no standard flower. So just a couple things like that, and then that way, you know, the shop can use what's looking best seasonally but also know that you know they're kind of working within the parameters that that you said great i hope that, that yeah um we have a few more here okay. what is the pouch of powder that you sometimes get with roses when you get an arrangement sure. does it do anything and do you recommend using it yeah we do recommend using it that's the floral life um i didn't think anything like this here so we give one to every customer who buys a pack of you know a bunch of flowers and it's just a flower food it helps to um keep the bacterial level low in the water so a lot of times you know there's quite a bit in these little packets so i will tell people that you know you could use maybe half at first when you first get home and keep the rest so that when you do change the water you can use the rest of the pack so they do actually it does actually work you know there's been a lot of different um what's the word experiments or you know that have been done to show the difference between using the floral life versus not using it um in water so we do recommend using it we definitely give it to everybody and you can always ask at a flower shop normally they'll always have it but in case they forget to put it in you know just say oh hey can i maybe have you know an extra packet of floral life um or the flower food whatever you want to call it and uh and like i said you know keep it if it's only one stem you know just use a little bit and save some so that you can use it for you know when you change the water give it a fresh cut um, and that way, you know, it'll help to definitely keep the water cleaner. Great. Um, you touched on this next question a little bit when you were talking about uh, how to preserve your roses, but do, is there, what color rose usually lasts the longest? Is one better over the other? Um, that's, you know, I would say it's not so much about the color. Sometimes it's the variety. So there's you know, this particular variety of yellow rose is actually opening up really quickly. It's beautiful, but we just got these in, I guess, you know, a couple days ago. And so they are opening up quickly. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they won't last as long. So sometimes a rose just opens up more quickly, but it'll still last at five to seven days. There are roses that are just, you know, slower to open. And so they might, you know, look beautiful and hold a tighter look but you might never see them open up completely. So it's really more about the variety of roses and, and your florist will kind of know that if you say, you know, oh, I'd really like something that's gonna open up really nice. Uh, we kind of learn that as we go on ordering different varieties of roses, just which ones open up long, uh, uh, I'm sorry, open up, you know, nicer than others maybe. Um, so as far as, yeah, I would say as far as lasting long, the biggest thing with the roses is gonna be, you know, trying to give them that fresh cut, keep them in a cool spot some people think, oh, you know, I'm going to put my flowers in front of the window um, and where it might be warm. And that's, you know, going to just decrease the life of, of any flowers. So you want to have them if they're in your house, you know, on a table where maybe, um, you know, they're not going to get direct, you know, any direct sun and they're just in a cooler spot. That's going to also help to preserve the life, you know, of any flowers, not just roses. Also kind of along the lines of preserving your flowers. Is there a natural way to keep unwanted pests away from this and other floral arrangements? Unwanted pests, do you mean like- I, I um, would assume they mean probably bugs. Bugs, well, so sometimes I guess see, 
you know, maybe like this time of year, if you're getting like a real um, garden bouquet or something, I don't know. If the, if the water gets yucky, you know, like so say you just let, you leave them and your water gets really kind of stagnant and gross, I would say that might be where you might get like little fruit flies or something like that. Um, other than that, I don't really, I don't really feel like flowers really cause <laughs> mm -hmm. um, pests. You know, it doesn't really happen. There's obviously people ask about their pets, like whether or not something that a cat might want not want to get into, um, and that I think is kind of it, it depends on your on your pet. You know, so if they're always going to get into the flowers. You know, I have a friend who she puts her flowers you know way up high because she knows the cat's always going to kind of get get at the flowers. But yeah, I would say if you're ever experiencing anything, you know, bug wise. The only thing I could imagine would be if the water has gotten really yucky uh, and you want to make sure, you know, you dump that out and get fresh water. But other than that, you really shouldn't have a problem with, with bugs or anything like that with fresh flowers. Okay, good to know. Um, yeah, typically, that would be more of a plant question, I guess, like a house plant question. Okay. Typically, how much water do you need in the vase? Do you fill it all the way, halfway? What's your recommendation? You want to fill it all the way. So, you know, maybe you might have like an inch from the top just so that it's not spilling over, quite frankly. Um, if, you know, if you only fill it halfway, then you're allowing for the chance that there might be some stems that you don't have quite hitting the water. If you might have cut something a little bit too short and it's maybe, you know, hitting at that point in the vase, then what's going to happen is as they suck up the water, you know, the water naturally starts to go down a little bit. You're going to have flowers that aren't in water and they're just, you know, they're gonna end up dying off. So, you know, you might see that sometimes with an arrangement, oh, how come this one flower died? You know, obviously you can pluck it out, and, um, but it might be because it wasn't reaching the water. So we always say, even when somebody takes an arrangement from the store, we might dump a little bit of water. So for transportation, it's not sloshing all over the place in their car, but we'll always tell them, you know, when you get home, make sure you fill it back up, you know, all the way, as much to the top as you can, so that the, uh, all the stems are in water. Sometimes we see arrangements with foam in their base rather than just water. Is there a reason behind this or is it a, a design? Yeah, tactic? so that's um, aqua foam. I think I have a piece here to probably show you. Yeah, so this is, sorry if I disappeared there, but <laughs> this is uh, aqua foam. So when it comes in, it's completely dry and then we submerge it in water so that it you know, completely soaks up all the water. Usually foam is gonna be used in a basket arrangement, so maybe like a wicker basket. Um, we're gonna use it in a ceramic container, like something like this. You might use Oasis in, because ideally if you use it in a, anything clear, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna see the Oasis and it really doesn't look as nice. Um, so we tend to use it in containers where, you know, you're not going to see it. And then the goal for using it is when you want to have a little bit more control over the placement of your flowers. So if you want to be able to, you know, have things coming at different directions and, mm -hmm. you know, something tall and something here, by having the oasis in there, you're able to put the stems in and, you know, really sort of manipulate the placement a little bit better than you could if there was just water in here. Um, so it's the same idea that you have to keep adding water to it because it will dry out. Um, and so you just kind of keep adding water to the container. If, it, if something you get, you know, if somebody delivers something to you and it's in that oasis, make sure you keep adding water to the base. You know, the outside normally there's going to be a saucer or some sort of lining in a basket or things like that. So you want to make sure that there's still um, fresh water. It's a, I, guess, I don't know if that makes sense, but, you know, that there's mm -hmm. still water also in the container because that'll keep sucking that up into the uh, into the foam. Okay. Uh, just two more questions here. Okay. Uh, what motivates you to create your floral arrangements? I guess what gives you inspiration other than, you know, somebody like me calling from the events office at Rutgers going, I need a centerpiece for an event. <laughs> sure. Well, I think, you know, what we really enjoy here are the just the flowers themselves, you know, like this time of year, um, everything's just so beautiful. You know, we, we got in today, I'll try to share with you. Um, let's see, like, this is something that's called PG hydrangea and it's just, it's, it's just gorgeous, you know? So we, it's kind of exciting when you get in flowers like this that are not available, you know, year round and they come in and you know, oh my gosh, you know, look at this, it came in so nice. 
um, and you're excited to use it, you know, I think it's fun to, you know, mix things like this with berries and um, hydrangea and all different types of flowers. So I would say, you know, we just, I always enjoy, of course, working on events where we have maybe, you know, a, uh, a color scheme and, and we're able to create based on seasonally what looks best at, at that time of year. Um, Cause that does change, you know, there's always certain flowers that might be available year round, but there's certain things that you might only see, you know, this time of year or in the summer. So it's kind of, I think that's what just makes it fun is being able to, you know, get in different things and different textures that make it fun to work with them. So you don't want to always be working with, you know, the same flowers every day. Right. Um, able to, yeah, use different things, I think is, uh, you know, what kind of motivates us. Okay, actually, we now we have two more questions. We just okay. got another one in the chat. No problem. How do you cut woody stem flowers so that they last longer? Oh, uh, well, there's certain woody stem flowers like lilac um, and even, I guess, quince, like some of the flowering, uh, blooming branches. And, you know, I did work with somebody once who basically would almost like smash them with a hammer. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, to kind of really open up the bottom of the stem. I would say we still just use our clippers, you know, like a very sharp pair of pruners or clippers um, most often, you know, so it's uh, it's definitely, you know, making sure that whatever you're using is sharp and is going to get a nice clean cut, um, you know, so that so that it opens it up. I'm not, you know, as familiar with like, you know, the idea of the smashing the stems and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it really works, but it is something that, you know, some, sometimes you can do with, you know, when you have that are just really, really sort of almost too thick to cut, I guess, you know, and then it kind of does still help to open it up. Cause the key is really always just so that anything that you're cutting is going to take up water. Um, and that way, you know, they'll last longer for you. Okay. What flowers last the longest within the household? And typically should you keep them out of light, um, like under chandeliers or things like that? Oh, I don't think, um, you know, uh, fluorescent lighting or you know, artificial lighting in the house is gonna really do much to diminish the, the vase life of flowers. Okay. Definitely, as I mentioned, um, sunlight, you know, will. And so people sometimes get, you know, just get confused as to, you know, you think flowers and all oh, they need, they need light. But once the flowers have been cut, obviously, and they're in, you know, they're in a vase of water, they don't, they're not growing anymore, right? So we don't want them to be in, in a hot window where they're just going to definitely end up wilting uh, quicker. Inside the house, I would say, you know, yeah, you need to be careful not to have it right near a heater, not right near a, um, a cold, maybe blast of air that might be directly on something that could actually, you know, like we see cold damage sometimes on flowers, but it, that's got to be really cold. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say the same thing for lights, unless like, you know, you can feel the heat coming off those lights and you know that they're, you know, just really hot. Usually the flowers are going to be so much lower than say a chandelier would be, right. that it's not, I wouldn't think it would normally cause a problem. Um, as far as what flowers last the longest, definitely, I would say the more, the more standard flowers, like I mentioned before, carnations, mums, um, those are definitely the longest lasting flowers. Uh, you know, they, they might last sometimes even, you know, two weeks um, if you're giving them a fresh cut versus, I guess, things like, I don't know, what else? You know, hydrangea is, is hit or miss. You know, some people, they love hydrangea, but they bring it home and they feel like the next day it's wilted. Um, so I would say with any flowers, if you do find that they wilt quickly on you for some reason, to, you know, take take a minute to give them a fresh cut. Sometimes you almost want to put them in lukewarm water at that point to see if they won't pump back up because you might look at something and think, you know, it's gone, <laughs> but you'd be surprised um, where things will pump back up sometimes. So sometimes it's just that they didn't have that nice, nice, you know, clean cut to begin with, and they might just need a nice fresh cut and, you know, a lot of water. So always, you know, don't give up, I guess, try to see if you can't maybe bring something back because sometimes that, that will happen. Great. And one final question, okay. um, and I think it's hopeful. Are, do you ever host in-person floral arrangement classes? Of course not now, but definitely we're all looking forward to the future and being back together again. So do you ever host these types of classes? Yeah, you know, I have them. 
Um, our shop here is actually kind of small, so we don't have a lot of room for um, for having everybody have their their workspace. I have done some some um, workshops in other you know in other spaces. So we did one you know with pumpkins one year where everybody did a nice fall arrangement in a pumpkin. Um, so yeah, it's definitely something that you know. And, and now that uh, that right that it is something that maybe we can do outside. You know, we we might consider doing something like that where we could have a floral design event that would be outside and everybody could have, you know, a space to work and be able to, you know, have the distance that we would need and everything to do that. But yeah. uh, so that's definitely something that we're looking into. Great. Well, we'll look forward to that. We'll keep our eyes peeled for that. And definitely the RUAA will keep you in mind for that. That's for sure. sure. Oh, that'd be great. Well, I want to thank you, Mary, for being here with us tonight um, on behalf of the Rutgers University Alumni Association. I just I want to thank you for this great presentation. It was very informative and I'm sure everybody's arrangements look beautiful. And I want to thank our attendees for being with us tonight and, and for their great questions. Um, I hope everybody stays well and we hope to see you soon. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you again. Thank you. Have a great evening. Bye. All right. Have a great night. Bye.